Arun, welcome to the India Hangout. It's getting tougher and tougher for authors to publish books of an investigative nature on big corporates. There are two examples that we are familiar with. Paranjay Guhathakuta, whose book on Reliance has received a legal notice and subsequently another legal notice uh, uh, serving or asking for damages of 100 crores. And we'll ask Paranjay to explain uh, that in a bit. Uh, the other uh, uh, victim in some ways is Tamal Bandepadai, who wrote a book on the Sahara Group, uh, was, uh, did not have the benefit of a legal notice being served, but uh, had to go to court and has fought a long and uh, arduous uh, battle with Sahara and has finally uh, concluded with uh, uh, both sides uh, backing off in some ways and uh, Sahara agreeing to let go and the book is going to be released. Uh, we're going to talk to both of them and ask them what it takes and why is this happening today and what are the some of the challenges and is there something fundamentally wrong when it comes to even the very nature of democracy and the ability to say what you want uh, in this country. Uh, Tamal, thank you very much for joining us. Paranjoy, thank you very much for joining us. So Tamal, tell us, you've uh, just come out of this battle with the Sahara group. Sure. Uh, first of all, unlike uh, Paranjoy's case where he's been served with a legal notice but it's yeah. not yet gone to court, yes. in your case you had no choice, you were dragged to yes. court straight away. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, this uh, book uh, had a very soft launch, I would call it, at India Habitat Center in Delhi sometime in November. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, my publisher sent a dummy copy, because the book was not even ready at that time, right. to the Sahara group, to Mr. Subrata Roy. Mm -hmm. uh, our expectation was that they would go through it and if they have any anything to add or they have any objections or any any observation mm. and we had a very positive mind that we would accommodate that whatever it is mm. but instead what happened is this one fine morning mm. I was called by my publisher that um, Sahara had filed a case mm. in Cal that too in Calcutta High Court mm. apparently I was served a notice in in HT Media office in Kolkata, mm. which is my office of gain, the so-called office of gain, so on and so forth. So I never actually was served in office. Mm. And they got an expert stay, injunction on the book, publication of the book. Right. So and also uh, they, they, they filed 200 crore defamation suit. Right, so there was a 200 crore defamation suit. Now, yeah. you did get in touch with the group before you actually published the book. You of did course. visit them, you spent time with them and all of that. Of course, of so course. What, 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 was there a sense that this would take a certain tenor at that point of time, which perhaps caused them apprehension subsequently? No, I, for, as far as I was concerned, I didn't, never had any apprehension because I did meet Mr. Roy at, mm. at Sahara Sahara. I spent uh, two days with him. He was a very gracious host. Mm. And I spent a lot of time, there's a no hold bars conversation, interviews, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. There are exchange of mails, uh, which uh, whatever the interview was corrected and all. Now, did I show, I mean, uh, uh, was I in touch with them at every point? Mm -hmm. Did I tell them what I am writing? Definitely not. Because okay, so in one line, what were you trying to do with this book? What were you trying to bring out or uncover? So Sahara is a very large conglomerate with 4,000 plus establishments and it's a largely unlisted con conglomerate. There's a lot of and mystery, a lot of intrigue. mystery mm -hmm. surrounding it, a lot of secrecy and all. Yeah. So as a, as a journalist, my entire idea was to unravel some of the mysteries and try to uh, find answer of the many questions which um, uh, all of us have. Right. Okay. Paranjay, let me uh, bring you in. Uh, you also started with a certain premise with Gas Wars, right? The book uh, which you wrote and now you're facing a legal notice, but not yet in court. Uh, tell us, what was your starting point? My starting point, I thought that this was a topic that was worthy of a detailed book. You know, bits and pieces were appearing in newspapers and magazines, but I thought the issue was very important because at the end of the day, uh, what I have argued in the book and what I have felt for a long time, that the real reason why the two Ambani siblings didn't really get along with each other, the, 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 I mean, the, the, there may have been a hundred reasons. I mean, maybe uh, Tina didn't get along with Nita, but, but the, the, the main reason, the, the most important reason why, why the two Ambani siblings fell out with each other was over the whole issue of who gains access to the natural gas that is coming out from the Krishna Godavari Basin. And how is it to be priced? I, I thought this was the key issue. And on this, the two brothers fell out with each other. And the rest, as you know, uh, is history. So I have been working on this theme. I thought this was a 
a book worth writing for it's, it's been now four and a half years now that i've been working on it now what happened is that a whole lot of things happened after that the the supreme court looked into the matter the older brother won that battle or what was perceived to be a victory for the older brother and reliance industries limited but then there were a whole lot of other things that happened there was a controller and auditor general report then mr jeff already was uh, uh removed from the post of uh, Petroleum Minister Mr. Moili came and as you know this whole issue is in the Supreme Court. So there were a series of events that took place subsequently all of which uh, made me uh, realize that this was really a very very important subject because it concerns how the country's natural resources are to be allocated, how they are to be priced, how they are to be valued and this whole issue of crony capitalism. At the end of the day the natural resources of this country belong to the people of this country. And the government has to be a fair, a transparent regulator or, or a custodian or a trustee of these resources. And when that doesn't happen, you have your set of problems. One small point I wanted to make. Yeah, go ahead. And, and that's really, you know, where uh, what happened to Tamal and me is common. You know, I, I wanted to be sure that I got the viewpoint of Reliance Industries Limited. I, I, I went offshore, you know, on the, on the rig. You know, I, they suggested that, you know, they uh, came off all my expenses. But I said, no, I, I'll come there, but I, I won't have, you'll have to take me onto the rig because I won't have the wherewithal to do that. So I went there. I spent many hours. I spent hours and hours and hours with their spokespersons, with their senior executives, including Mr. B.K. Ganguly, who's the second in command of RIL's oil and gas operations. You know, so I made every attempt to include their viewpoint. So I think if you look at the book, and it, it, the main book is into four, is 400 pages, there are 200 pages of annexures and appendices, the, the RIL viewpoint, the viewpoint of Reliance Industries Limited and Mr. Mukesh Ambani has been given in full. So I, I, I think it, it's unfair of them uh, to have served me a legal notice because I think I've been more than fair to uh, Reliance Industries Limited and its chairman and managing director, Mr. Mukesh Ambadi. Was there any point, at any point, did you feel or did they give you the impression that they were not happy with the way the book was shaping up or was it a complete surprise which only happened post-publication? No, but how would they know how the book was shaping up? Because I didn't show them the manuscript. But they knew I was working on the book. Right, but did so, they want to see a copy of the manuscript? No, no, no. There's no question of giving them any copy of any manuscript. No, okay, I, I didn't do did that. They, no, no. My question is, did they ask for it? No, they didn't ask for it. Okay. So, Tamal, let me uh, come to you. So, you're saying that the your it was a complete surprise. Yes. Why was it a complete surprise? I mean, in, in a sense that... Uh, I mean, I know that they filed a case, but is it because of some offending paragraphs or chapters or is it because of the complete tenor of the book and the fact that in some ways it was trying to uncover this intrigue, which was obviously not a good intrigue. I mean, this was not supposed to be a positive story at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I would think it's a combination of everything. The way maybe, uh, you know, uh, the way I treated the subject, uh, mm -hmm. they did. And mind you, they never asked for a book. My, my publisher volunteered uh, mm -hmm. a copy to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think the, the entire approach, the way the things have been treated and all. Uh, so they, 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 in their court affidavit, they cited certain instances, but that's, they said inter alia, meaning there are many more instances. So overall, they were extremely unhappy with the, the way I treated the subject. Possibly, that's 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 been the case. Okay. So is there a, uh, the larger problem? Okay, and 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 I'll come to what companies or organizations really expect when someone writes a book, and perhaps it's really puff jobs. Yeah. But let me uh, get you some questions uh, that are coming in. One is uh, Hindol asks, what are the biggest challenges for a journalist taking on corporations? It's, it's very, very, very tough, I would say, unlike uh, overseas, uh, mm. particularly in the developed countries. Here, uh, I think the tolerance level of larger corporations is very low. Mm. And one thing I have, I have found out is this, you know, uh, they're, they're pretty okay if you're writing an article in newspapers mm. or newspaper editorials. I would mm. think about Sahara, mm. newspaper editorials are much, much more critical than mm. what I've written in the book. Mm. And there have been large uh, pieces I myself have done in yes. my newspaper, yeah. but they're very critical and all. Mm. But there, because the establishment is there, um, uh, the, uh, the newspaper establishment is there, they think twice or four times before taking on, even though there are many cases of uh, uh, right. filing a case. Yeah. But 
as an individual as an author you are a soft target yeah. that's 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 about the target part and mm. second part is, i think psychologically mm. they feel that newspaper shelf life is very low mm. whereas when they were there was a, whenever you are writing a book mm. it's for posterity and it it becomes a reference point for future books so on and so forth mm. so they are very sensitive about books okay that's that's the problem right so uh, uh, paranjay the same question uh, in a way uh, what is the big challenge for journalists taking on cooperation so in a way because these two cases seem to suggest that you're really not at uh, liberty to, to write any book uh, which is against a large corporation in india you know govind i completely 100% endorse what amal has just said you know it's one thing to write a newspaper article which is forgotten tomorrow or day after but once you write a book you know that has a longer shelf life as he rightly points out it becomes a a a a a work which could be referred to subsequently take take, take one of the points on which uh, reliance industries limited has claimed that i have defamed the company and its chairman and managing director that is uh, i have suggested that the government and 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 dr manmohan singh the prime minister uh, uh, was pressurized to remove uh mr jaypal reddy from the post of minister of uh, petroleum and natural gas and and he was uh, virtually kicked upstairs and made minister for science and technology now i'm not the first guy to say this there are dozens of newspaper articles and editorials in various newspapers which have said exactly the same thing so the question was why were they they these newspapers and these magazines were not sued for defamation why uh, is is once a book is written you get sued for or, or or you get threatened in my case it's a threat or only a legal notice has been served on or only not one but and paranjo it's also because you're an individual yeah one other point you know uh, the question about how difficult it is you know to write against uh, large corporate uh, entities or uh, those who are uh, uh, powerful you know there are two aspects to it first is the the corporate captains of this country they are they not only wield a lot of financial power they they indeed very rich individuals but they also wield a lot of political clout and and the point is because they're also large advertisers there's a lot of pressure on large sections of the media to either not publish or put on air information or opinions which are excessively critical of these large corporate entities or or, or large corporate or, or corporate captains or big uh, business people and big industrialists but uh, you know there's this whole thing about today it's become in india you know it's not easy to do this kind of thing you need you need time you need resources and at the end of the day you need an outlet you you need somebody who's willing to you know in that sense uh, perhaps even antagonize Uh, those who are very powerful by putting out information and opinions which is not always in their favor and and the issue is not just the opinions you put out even when you get the other side of the viewpoint there is uh you still can take a viewpoint i i can say that yes i've given you reliance view the view of reliance industry limited in full but i'm not entirely in agreement with what they're saying no that is in my opinion my fundamental right as a citizen So lots I mean, of more questions and comments coming uh, folks uh, Raj Naik says has the recent filing of a case against gas was uh, had any uh, had an impact on the sales of the book my sense is that companies don't realize that they actually help sales uh, uh, Paranjay uh, has this uh, have your sales gone up because of the case uh, I would like to believe it has uh, uh, as of yesterday I was told they been over uh, 400 uh, downloads on amazon kindle alone uh, 300 in india and about 100 outside india i don't have the exact figures of how many uh, of the printed copies of the book have been sold uh, I, i know there are quite a few in the market but you know uh, i i don't know uh, I, i i must say that uh, by serving these legal notices on on me and my co-authors uh, it certainly attracted a lot of attention Uh, and and uh, i would like to believe that it's helped the sales of the book but i i don't really know time alone will tell uh, got you a 100 crore legal notice which came subsequently after the initial legal notice asking you to desist you see what happened was the first legal notice which came on the 16th of april did not 
uh, specify any damages, nor was there a deadline by which we had to reply. But the second notice not only uh, specifies the amount uh, which uh, has been specified as damages, which is 100 crore rupees, it's also set a deadline which is 10 days from the receipt of the notice or from the date of the notice. And what is particularly interesting is in the second notice, uh, what uh, the lawyers, uh, that's Khaitan and company acting on behalf of Reliance Industries Limited has put out, is that they have taken objection to me quoting Mr. Gopal Krishna Gandhi, who uh, during a, a lecture, a public lecture in Vigyan Bhavan on the, on the 15th of April, in front of hundreds and hundreds of people, described Reliance, the Reliance Group as a parallel state. The, the occasion was the, the golden jubilee function of the CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation. All I did was I quoted him. I merely quoted what he said. He happened to be a part of the audience. Now, lawyers for Reliance Industries Limited says he also uh, has, uh, I mean, he's also been in a, in, in a defamatory manner. They described him as one Mr. G.K. Gandhi. Well, he happens, he also happens to be the former governor of West Bengal. So, I, I, mean, I, I find... Uh, hold, your, hold your thought. I, I'm going to come back in a second. Uh, question for you, Tamal, from Hindol. He says, or rather he asks, did you get organizational support in this battle? In the sense from my newspaper, yeah. of course, mm -hmm. of course I did. I mean, all kinds of support. And financial as well, or is it just support? Uh, no, it's it's against uh, it, it. It is against an individual, so I had to fight on my own. So there's okay. a lot of stress mm. gone through it, um, but um, uh, morally, um, uh, giving me holidays to work on my this thing. In fact, past four months, uh, I hardly did any office work. Mm. I. My entire focus was on the on the on the on the case. Mm. So they they I think um, I, I'm 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 very happy to say that it's a wonderful way of helping a colleague, uh, which the organisation has done. Mm. And absolutely, without right. that without that I would not have been able to uh, fight this out. Right. Okay. So some more questions. Uh, and okay, one more point uh, before I go to a question. Ashutosh Sinha says Tamil's point reminds me of an instance where I had written Ashu as a journalist. Something nasty about Videocon and all that the chairman wanted was that the story be removed from the website. The television story comes and goes after a day anyway. So, okay. Another point, uh, what is the, that big business is allergic to any criticism or investigation. Is that a new phenomena or does it not happen world over? Now, I think that um, off late you have seen in Indian context uh, there are there are because there are books sponsored by the companies. Yeah. You know? I myself after I wrote my first book on HDFC Bank, which is on my own, mm. I got a couple of offers, uh, not couple even more offers from various companies to do. Mm. I I politely declined. Mm. So there have been I I will not name there have been many books where actually there are company sponsored books, mm. but a, a, a journalistic work a journalist on his on his or her own looking into yeah. a company and getting into some investigative mode and all. Yeah. So that's, I think that's relatively, uh, that it doesn't happen too often. Right. So in a way, mm. there is there is only one model of uh, writing when it comes to business, which is positive. And mostly it's, it's yes. sponsored as well. Yes. Right. Am I yes. right, Puranjai? Is Because maybe in some ways, what you're doing is going against the grain of what exists today, which is really positive writing and uh, an odd sponsored writing. You know, you know, at, at a very philosophical level, none of us like to be criticized. So whether we as an individual or you as a person, uh, you don't like your wife telling you you're not behaving properly or, or, or your daughter telling you that or whatever. But at, at a more important, I mean, I, mean I, 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 I don't want to trivialize this issue. The point is the corporate sector across the world and also in India, the difference is because they pack a lot of financial clout. Because they, they have a lot of money behind them and they have, you know, sort of battalions of public relations experts and lawyers at their disposal. So they, they think that, you know, they can actually uh, often intimidate and harass those who are critical of them. You know, but I, I think unlike politicians who are kind of used to people, you know, criticize them publicly, our corporate captains uh, uh, in, across the world and certainly in India as well, uh, tend to be somewhat allergic to criticism, even if that criticism is based on fact and, and even if it is uh, done in a fair manner and it does not violate uh, a fundamental right of a citizen, which is enshrined in Article 19.1a of the Constitution of India, you know, so long as you're not defamatory, so long as you're fair, 
you know, I, I, I think uh, the tolerance levels tend to be far lower when it comes to large corporate entities, um, uh, certainly the, the large corporate entities in India. Right. So, uh, Paranjoy, one quick question again uh, for you from, uh, it's on our G Plus platform. Uh, uh, Hindul again asks, uh, what will Paranjoy do about the 100 crore legal notice? Is he fighting it all through his own resources? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, my lawyer, Mr. Sumanth Bey, he is uh, he's going to be giving a, a reply. Uh, he, we, we, we are replying to that legal notice and uh, we are replying that, uh, you know, uh, there's no ground whatsoever uh, for, for serving this kind of a legal notice on us or demanding 100 coin damages. That, that, that this is an attempt to kind of browbeat uh, uh, a person like me or, and, or, and, and my co-authors into submission. I mean, that, that's the gist of what we're going to say in, in our reply. Right. So uh, here's another question. Anil Kumar Thakur asked, what is the way out to stand in front of these crony capitalists who become a big danger for the common man? I mean, really, the, the larger point is that big business, uh, threatening, intimidating. What's the way forward? How do we create an environment where there is scope for uh, more, uh, let's say, criticism to be accepted? I would think more and more uh, of us in the journalist community books. should write, come on. And second is that we shouldn't surrender. For mm. instance, in my case, you see it was a case against an individual. Mm. And uh, there was every possibility that because, you know, fearing stress and trauma and so on and so forth, I had buckled down. And so you uh, could have buckled uh, down. That yes. was, you, had, you did have that option. Yeah. Yes, I could. I, I would have just said that uh, I don't want to publish the book. Right. Uh, and everything would have been every, fine. Everything, everything would have been fine. And, yeah. and unlike... And people Par would have still given you credit because you at least tried to take yes. on... Uh, yeah. And unlike Paranjaya's case, you just see they have come out... Well, there are two differences. One is in my case, they filed a case mm. and a defamation suit uh, mm. in his case is the threat. Mm. And second is in his case, Paranjaya's case, after the book is published. Mm. My case even after... Before the book was published. The mm. book was never published. Mm. But uh, we were told that, no, the proofreaders have read it, the forward writer has read it mm. and... The uh, production people have seen it and all so you have to pay us 200 crore mm. I mean how you get 200 crore how, how do you quantify why not 20 crore yeah. why 200 crore yeah. I don't get into and, the and, thing and that's a question as well saying that why is it 100 crore for Mr. Ambani <laughs> that, yeah. that's what I'm saying yeah. uh, so but, but, the, but the, the point I'm making is this uh, I could have just uh, you know buckled down under pressure and, and surrendered but I did not right. do that but do, do you feel the publishers themselves are uh, I mean we've seen it in many other cases where the publishers obviously uh, turn chicken and run. Yes, so yes, is that many, many cases. But yeah. in my case, fortunately, publisher did not do. Of course, publishers fought its own battle. I fought it own because there are two public. I was the first respondent. Mm. The case was against me, and publisher was the second respondent. Mm. Now I could not depend on publisher because publisher could have run away at right. any moment of time. Right. So my my this thing is just like the book is my baby. I have to protect it. So I have to fight it on my own. Mm. That's what I did. Mm. And of course, publisher did not. How long did you take to write it, Tamal? Just think. about a year. About yes. a year. Just about it. Okay. So, Paranjoy, again, in your case, uh, you, I, if I remember correctly, you, you, there were publishers or no publisher showed interest and therefore you decided to self-publish. I mean no, it was actually a little more complicated than that. Uh, you know, I had uh, signed up uh, with a particular publisher with a co-author, but that didn't work out because my co-author, uh, you know, sort of backed out. Then I signed up with another large publisher and that publisher... Uh, wanted me to cut the book down by half its uh, of its half its present size and also uh, uh, they didn't say they will not publish it but they said they'll take much longer to bring it out so i was very keen on bringing out the book now in the run up to the elections because i thought this whole issue of gas prices it's pending in court and there's a lot of public interest about it so i chose to become my own publisher i cannot say that the publishers said they were not going to publish it. But, you know, I, I think uh, today with uh, technology and, and today I think it's become far, far more easier for individual authors to publish on their own. You know, I, I think everything that a publisher or a traditional publisher, all the services that a tradi traditional publisher provides are also available to individual publishers to self-publish. Right, and, and that's a comment that's come in uh, from Raj Naik. He says, clearly self-publishing and also digital is the new space which can support such efforts. I would agree with that entirely. Right. 
Tamal, uh, yeah. were there other uh, platforms or avenues open? Or, I, I mean, you still need those avenues and platforms because the book is still to go on. Uh, no, my, my case is also quite interesting and to some extent like Paranjaya's. Yeah. So my original publisher was uh, Random House. Okay. Uh, but they sat on the manuscript for a few months and they, they, they had a legal, legal read, mm. what do you call it, legally mm. read it. And they asked me many questions, I answered, but still they were sitting on it. Mm. I would think they developed a cold feed. So one fine morning I asked them that uh, I'll be happy if you release it and, mm. and try my luck somewhere else. Mm. And <laughs> I thought they were happy <laughs> saying, okay, go ahead. Mm. So uh, Jayco is the, is the publisher which published my first book and they really took care of it. Mm -hmm. So the moment I approached Jayco, Jayco also got it legally read and then Jayco said fine with us. Mm. Incidentally, after the court case was filed mm. and after I decided, I mean when I decided that I will fight it out, I will not give up and all, I was flooded with offers from various publications, okay. various publishers, mm. both India and overseas. Mm. Uh, they are pretty keen to publish it but I was told that when the court case is on, mm. um, since I am not an NRI, I, I, mean, I have to go by Indian right. laws, so as long as the stay is on, I, I could not and all. Right. And even now, mm. after the, the we, we got it settled amicably and Jayco is going ahead. I have got a few text messages from very reputed publishers that uh, if you want, we are there to publish your book. That's great. Great to hear so, that, Taman. <laughs> <laughs> I think because the controversy, again, controversy yeah. has given it some kind of publicity, yeah. though possibly it will do well, yeah. better than what it otherwise would have done. So yeah. they're, they're, and, and surely they're for, the, for the next book, if not this one. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, success has always, you know, uh, many takers and uh, that's, that's, right. that's. So uh, let's ask, uh, I mean, we are heading to a close. So let's ask the, the, the larger question, Paranjan, let me come to you first. You know, what uh, Tamal alluded to it, he said, what's, when I said, what's the way forward, right? So he said, okay, if more journalists write books which are uh, in-depth, investigative, hard-hitting, then perhaps we create an environment where people learn to accept it as well. Is that the way forward or is it the other way which is to say, okay, let's play gorilla in this, go self-publish, go, uh, go on Amazon uh, e-books and things like that and fight that battle. No, I don't think these are mutually exclusive strategies. I think at one level, individual writers, journalists, investigative journalists, they also have to, you know, stand up. You know, I mean, they have to have the guts. I mean, they, they should refuse to be intimidated. So long as your conscience is clear that you have been fair, you have been, you know, you've taken a position after giving whoever you're writing about a, 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 the, a fair right to reply. Once your conscience is clear that you've been fair, then I think you should not feel harassed or intimidated just because people threaten you with legal notices. I, I think more journalists have to do this. What self-publishing and, and, and the, the, the internet has done is actually facilitate the, this process and empowered individuals. So I don't see these as you know two separate strategies. One is a guerrilla strategy, the other is not. I, I, I think we are living in, in different times. I, I think Danish McDonald's uh, book wouldn't have met the fate it did uh, you know, a, a decade ago uh, if he had published it today. And, and he has indeed published two different books, uh, two different versions of that book. So I, I think we are living in different times and, and I think the internet has the potential to empower individual authors. And uh, uh, there's also a, another comment which is aimed at publishers which says Jitendra Bhargav's book on Air India was somewhere where the publisher buckled under pressure. Publishers also need to stand up, isn't it? He asked. Okay, Tamal, so to you, uh, you, you start, started off by saying that we need to create more writers, more writing and more yeah. investigative, hard hitting. What else can we do to improve the environment for you, for your next book, if it is in the same genre and for others who may want to attempt? See, one is, I, I don't think the self-publication, uh, publishing is the answer because mm. it, you can you can get sued even after self-publishing. Right. So, uh, what's the guarantee? It, mm. it doesn't give you any protection. Sure, sure. That's point number one. Point number uh, two is this, I don't believe in guerrilla warfare because then you are not being fair. Mm. Because always, like a, like a journalist who has integrity and who care for ethics, you need to reach out to people and mm. incorporate them their point of yeah. view. No, no, I'm, so, I'm not saying you shouldn't do so, that. Yeah. So, we yeah. have to do that. Yeah, so, yeah. the moment you do that, 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 that entity is aware that you are doing something on that. Mm. I think that, I think a corporate India needs to be taught that mm. uh, larger tolerance, mm. you know. 
because um, I think that's that's the way. Somehow educating them. I don't know how you do it from mm -hmm. various ways uh, through this thing and all. Uh, somehow educating them. Uh, that's one part of it. That uh, maybe larger degree of Catholicism. A larger degree of tolerance you need to have it mm. that's point number one as long as the journalist who is writing is true to the true to right. facts right. and has integrity yeah. and all yeah and, and i would and second part is this yeah. uh, if they think that the newspaper articles and the editorials their self light is very very low but because by the evening you see you get some peanut uh, fellow is you know is wrapping it in the day's paper mm. but that's not the case in the internet age yeah. you know the whatever comes is this that's also as as important Motive. as a book and yeah. uh, you know that that also can become a reference point. Yeah. So there is virtually no difference between a book and a uh, well-established and, and, and a news report or uh, a news editorial because uh, that's always there forever uh, on the net. Okay. So I think the larger issues is, is we have to create a forum among the, the all the journalists and all and try to educate the corporate India about tolerance, about Catholicism, about being by yeah, being because the larger liberal. point larger point being that if you're not tolerant, you're showing up in bad light in any case yeah. and right. at the end of the day you are actually serving to the author's cause as Paranjay showed us yeah. 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 Because, the, because the sale will go up yeah. uh, people more and more people will be aware of the book yeah. and all so it's not the right way I think they, they need to be advised uh, in a proper way they need to be right. educated right and and uh, we run out of time on that note but we obviously mm -hmm. wish both authors Paranjay and uh, Tamal here all the very best with their books and we also uh, wish all of those who want to write books uh, which are particularly critical in this case of corporate India all the best in their efforts. Thank you very much for joining us on the India Hangout. We are going to be back.